Hello everyone, thank you for joining me today. This is the mind of Lilith and I hope you're all doing well. I wanted to quickly share my thoughts about relationships in the entertainment industry in general. And you know, a lot of our community, and black people in general, we tend to look up to and try to emulate celebrities, whether they're actors, singers, athletes, you know, it's quite obvious that we want to emulate and live vicariously through these celebrities to the point where we conduct ourselves the way we believe celebrities conduct themselves, especially when it comes to relationships. You know, over the past several years, the community has been complaining. Men and women have been complaining about the state of relationship dynamics in the Black community. And one of the reasons why I believe that Black men and Black women, regular 9 to 5 working class, non-entertainer Black men and Black women have a hard time dating. One of the reasons I believe this is the case is because a lot of us try to emulate the attitudes, the behaviors, the dispositions, and the expectations of entertainers who have access to resources and women and men and, you know, fame and celebrity to the extent that their perspective on relationships and the way they engage in their relationships are way different than the average nine to five regular Joe or regular Pam, okay? And so I think since the 1960s and 70s, once the black community started to put these celebrities on a pedestal, we saw them as our leaders, our spokespeople, black excellence, uh, the personification of the American dream. Once we put these celebrities on a pedestal, we tried to we started to try to mimic their lifestyles, their behaviors, their attitudes. And if you guys pay attention to celebrity lifestyles and their relationships, most celebrity relationships are very dysfunctional. It is hard for these people, in spite of all their money and their fame and their success and their perceived beauty, it is hard for these people to maintain healthy, functional relationships. There's always issues of what? Infidelity a lack of appreciation for their partner, not having enough time to spend with their partner because they're traveling all the time and working. Like the last thing the black community needs to do is to emulate these celebrity relationships and celebrity culture. And I think that is one of the reasons why the Passport Bros movement, one of the reasons, there are several, but one of the reasons why the Passport Bros movement has also become so popular is because a lot of these men want to have access to beautiful women they feel entitled to have access to these beautiful women and to treat these beautiful women the same way that celebrities treat beautiful women. But celebrities can afford to pay for beautiful groupies from all over the world. They can afford to pay $15,000, 20, dollars $30,000 for a groupie to fly out from Miami, from Brazil, from Colombia, from whatever, to be with them. So a lot of these black men want to live the lifestyles of the rich and famous. So they want to have access to beautiful women too, but they can't afford it. So they go to countries where, you know, they can afford to buy the women who look like the women who are in these music videos. I honestly believe that uh, the main, one of the main reasons why the Passport Bros prefer to go to Latin America uh, to trick off on women is because that's what they've seen the rappers do for the past 30, 40 years. Hip hop is what, 50 years old now? Since the 90s, we have seen rappers splurging and spending money on women who look like the exoticals that you would find in South America or the mixed race exoticals you find in California mixed with Asian and black or black and Latino. You know, these black men want to have access to the dimes they see on these music videos without having to pay for that. So this is one of the reasons why I believe that uh, the Passport Bros movement became so popular is because these men and women, women in our community do too, they are emulating the lifestyles and the dynamics of celebrity relationships. Most celebrity men, black men in general, they do not care about family. They don't care about community. They don't even want to be role models. They just want you to follow them and to worship them and to emulate them and to want to be like them so that you can give them your money. It's all about money. These celebrities don't want to be your leader. All they want to do is lead you to the store or to the app where you can buy their stuff. That's it. You know, to be quite honest, I had no idea how impressionable black, a lot of black adults are. Like a lot of black people are easily manipulated, controlled, and programmed by what they see and hear in the media. I had no idea it was that easy to convince adults, grown adults, 
to engage in self-destructive behaviors because somebody else with money was presenting that as an attractive lifestyle to them. So you have these celebrities who are these mainly rappers, but also R&B singers and these athletes and these, you know, actors in general. You have a lot of celebrities who cannot maintain healthy relationships because of their own issues, personality disorders, the pressures of the industry, groupies, so on and so forth. And, you know, instead of us taking a step back and saying, well, there's something toxic about the entertainment industry. There is a reason why none of these entertainers are married. Or there's a reason why these entertainers have such messy, dysfunctional lives. And they have baby mamas everywhere. They're getting divorced. They have, you know, DUIs and drug issues. Instead of us seeing how toxic and dysfunctional the entertainment industry is, we're like, oh my God, they're getting so much attention. They're so glamorous. They're so rich. They're so beautiful. They're, you know, these entertainers are everything that I, a marginalized, poor black person in America, want to be. Not even poor. A marginalized black person in America wants to be. I want to have the fame and the fortune and the power that these celebrities have. So in spite of the fact that we can see how dysfunctional these people's relationships are, how they how dysfunctional their lifestyles are, how dysfunctional their families are, in spite of us seeing that, we want to emulate them because they have money, because they have fame, because they have access to beautiful men and women. We're not seeing the pitfalls of that lifestyle. So now you have a situation, for example, with Quavo and Sweetie. Sweetie is obviously a pass around the industry. It is what it is. And even though Sweetie's a pass around the industry, you have men with money and power fighting over her, making songs about her, buying her things, right? Flying her out. So in spite of the dysfunction, the young girls will only see that Sweetie is getting attention from rappers who they're attracted to, who they want to be with, right? So for example, when the rapper T.I. was popping, you had lots of women who wanted to be with him because of the way he looked, because of his money, because of his fame. They didn't care about how messy his personal life was. They didn't care if he was married or not. It didn't matter. They wanted to be whoever, whatever they needed to be in order to get his attention. And this is one of the reasons why our relationships are so toxic and dysfunctional because we are trying to mold and shape our identities to either be groupies that attract entertainers or to be like the ballers who run through women, who run through beautiful women because they can afford to spend fifteen, twenty, thirty thousand dollars at the strip club or for a couple of handbags after, you know, a session, right? So it's like we can't keep complaining about how dysfunctional and toxic black relationships are if we have a culture that emulates and idolizes celebrities to the point where we think like them, we try to act like them, we try to move like them. Celebrity relationships are not the same as regular nine to five average Joe Schmo relationships. So here's the rub. Imagine you have a young girl who is attracted to a rapper and she likes the rapper because he's popular, he's charming, he's talented, he has money, he's attractive, all those things. So, you know, over the course of her lifetime, because we're inundated with hip hop music and hip hop culture, over the course of this young girl's lifetime, she is being subconsciously programmed to gravitate towards men who look like the rappers that she was programmed to be attracted to. Men with a certain swag, a certain personality, a certain way of conducting themselves in relationships, a certain arrogance. She's going to look for a man who exemplifies the qualities and characteristics of a rapper. Because in her young mind, the rapper persona is associated with status, success, fame, money, accomplishment. And she's been programmed to believe this. So she's not going to be attracted to a square, nerd, carpenter, construction worker, regular guy. Because she's been programmed to look up to and to emulate the lifestyles of the groupies who have attracted the rappers that she wants to be with. So now she wants to become the groupie or she wants to look like the groupie who will attract the rapper. And this is how sweeties are born. This is how sexy reds are born. They're emulating the women who had the attention of the men who they were idolizing as rappers. The same thing for these men. Imagine a young man growing up, he's watching music videos, he's seeing beautiful Latino women twerking or mixed exotical women twerking and dancing. And the men are throwing money at these girls, right? The girls are beautiful. So he, the guy is saying to himself, I have to be like this rapper in order to get those type of women. I have to act like a rapper, think like a rapper, comport myself like a rapper. At the very least, he's associating those Latino, Latina, mixed exotical women with success and power and fame and prominence because the rappers have made these Latina or exotic women into status symbols. They're trophies, right? 
So this young boy is going to grow up. Subconsciously programmed into thinking that women who look like him or black women, they're not status symbols. They want to live like rappers. They want to be like the rappers. And if they want to be like rappers, they want what the rapper wants. The rapper wants the big booty Latina girl, right? Or the big booty exotical, whatever. Same thing with the black girl. The black girl wants the tatted up, swagged out, bad boy rapper who likes groupies and stripper thoughts. And so she is going to turn into a groupie stripper thought in order to attract the kind of man that she believes wants that type of woman. So now you have regular Joe Schmo average black men and black women or black girls and black boys growing up and being programmed to idolize and emulate what these entertainers look for in partners. But they don't understand that these entertainers aren't looking for long term partnerships. They're looking for easy one night stands. How many women has Drake slept with? Hundreds, if not thousands. They're not looking for wives. These rappers and these entertainers are not presenting a united family front. Well, some basketball players do. Like LeBron James does that. Steph Curry does it. But for the most part, these rappers and entertainers, they flaunt their ignorance. They flaunt their debauchery. And they flaunt their wealth. And so because a lot of us don't have access to that, and a lot of us feel marginalized and unimportant and invisible, if we don't have money and fame and status and success, we basically contort ourselves into fitting into these stereotypes of being the vixen, the ratchet, the, the groupie, the rapper, the bad boy. We're trying to fit into these stereotypes to be perceived as more attractive because we are trying to emulate the lifestyles of people who find those types of people attractive. Rappers prefer groupies because they don't like to commit to anyone. Why should I commit to one woman when I have access to tens of thousands of women at my concert while I'm on tour? And unfortunately, the average black guy who grew up worshiping these rappers and these artists, they want to live the same lifestyle. So they're going to gravitate towards women who look like Amber Rose, who look like Kim Kardashian, who look like Sweetie, who look like Black China, right? Because they have been programmed to believe that these women are status symbols because they're associated with rich and powerful men. They're associated with the most, with the richest and most powerful men in our communities by and large. For the most part, you know, there's... A lot of barriers for black people who want to become successful in industries that have nothing to do with entertainment. Industries like science, technology, mathematics, engineering. We're not really encouraged to get into these spaces and or we are sabotaged also from becoming prosperous in these spaces. There are some people like Robert Smith who have made it successful in the tech space um, and finance. I'm not saying it's not possible, but because of the way our culture has been programmed by our enemies, um, we don't seek economic empowerment outside of the entertainment industry. I'm not saying all black people. There are lots of black people who are academics, nurses, teachers, doctors, lawyers, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, mainly immigrants or farm-born people. But yeah, black American people, by and large, we consider the entertainer, the athlete, to be black excellence. And so we want to emulate the lifestyles of these individuals. Uh, average black girls want to be chosen by these entertainers, so they buy the Kim Kardashian starter kit, right? Fake boobs, fake boobies, you know, nose jobs, face jobs, whatever, Malaysian wigs, makeup. They be try to look like what they think these rappers and entertainers are attracted to because they consider these men to be the alphas of the community when they're actually not. These entertainers and these rappers and these athletes do not want to be your role models. They want to take your money. That's all they care about. Are you paying their bills? Are you paying for their hookers and their groupies? The same thing for black men. A lot of black men, they try to look like, act like, speak like rappers. You know, they even become rappers in many cases. A lot of black men wanted to become rappers at some point, which is a hot mess. And now a lot of them want to become content creators. It is what it is. I guess it's progress. But yeah, these rappers and entertainers, these young boys who want to emulate rappers and entertainers, they're going to gravitate towards women who look like the groupies, who are status symbols because that's how they were programmed. So how do you want to have healthy relationships in a black community when you have a group of people who emulate celebrities who have dysfunctional relationships by design? Most celebrities cannot have healthy functional relationships because of their schedule, because of groupies, because of pressure, because of drugs. It's a whole different culture and different environment. And we have tried to transfer the culture of celebrity onto the average American citizen or the average black American. And that was a really bad idea. That's a really bad idea. We need to stop looking up to these celebrities and stop trying to emulate or imitate celebrity lifestyles. We are not them and they are not us. They don't want to be our role models. They just want you to spend your money on their merchandise at their concert or whatever they're selling. They're here to sell a product. And they are the product as well. They're selling themselves. They're selling a persona. That's not even who they really are, to be honest. Most of them are not the way that they present themselves to be in the media. They're selling an identity in order to market a product. So 
If you want to have healthier, happier relationships, the first step is to stop emulating and imitating and trying to be like celebrities. The rules are way different for celebrities than for the average, regular, regular, schmegular person. For the most part, celebrities have to be intentional about having a traditional, functional relationship. It is very difficult for two working celebrities, two successful celebrities, who are active in the industry to have a healthy relationship. That's why when you see two celebrities getting married, you'll see one person in that relationship, they'll pull back and they'll focus on their family and they'll allow their partner to, you know, focus on their career. That's what Whitney and Bobby did. That's what Eva Mendez is doing now with her husband, Ryan Gosling. Um, this is what Will and Jada did. Somebody has to take a step back and be the traditional partner in an unconventional relationship. We're having regular people who have regular money trying to look like celebrities. And again, these passport bros are going to Latin America and other parts of the world to live a celebrity lifestyle off of a middle class income salary because they believe they're entitled to live like these celebrities. They're living vicariously through them. The same thing with women. A lot of regular women, you know, being flown out to Dubai to be used as toilets because they want to have a nice car and a nice house and a nice body to floss on social media like Kim Kardashian to attract ballers. Like, the snake is eating itself. As a whole, you're not going to have healthy relationships if you emulate rappers and celebrities. We need to stop emulating or idolizing rappers and celebrities who are not living the lifestyles that are conducive to happy, healthy, functional marriages and relationships. And that's another thing too. You know, a lot of people are saying they don't want traditional relationships because back in the day, the women were mistreated, they were denigrated, they were devalued, et cetera, et cetera. That is fine. But most men want a traditional relationship whereby the wife does not have the power or the resources to leave because she feels like it, because she doesn't like his attitude, because he's beating her ass. Most men want a traditional marriage where their wife is not going to leave them until he's ready to get rid of her for whatever reason, right? The fact that women have the ability or the power, the resources to leave when they feel like it, that makes men very uncomfortable. So I'm confused when women say they want a committed relationship and they want to get married they want that traditional title but they don't want to do traditional things like these men don't want to compromise in that regard and if they do compromise you'll be the breadwinner and you won't like that dynamic either so over the past several decades um women have changed significantly in society they've changed because they have more freedom i'm not saying they've changed biologically but psychologically they have more freedom to do whatever they want to do the men, they haven't changed much as far as like what they want, what they need, because by and large, nothing was taken from them. They weren't operating from a position of oppression or lack of freedom. So they were pretty okay with traditional marriages in the sense of, you know, not to say they were faithful to their wives, but they were okay with the dynamic where they had control over the woman. They were not okay with being forced to get married to these women because they got somebody pregnant. But they were okay with, by and large, they were okay with women knowing their place, quote unquote, not having the power to leave whenever she felt like it, not having her own money. They were not complaining about that. The women were complaining about not having their own power, their own money, their own resources, and being beholden to men. So the men are where they were 40, 50, 60, 70 years ago, and the women have changed significantly. Not for the better or the worse, it just they've changed, right? So now you have two people who are not even on the same age. Because the men are like, well, I liked you the way you were before. Why'd you change? And the women are like, well, I didn't like the way I was before. I want I a different type of experience in marriage. So what do you expect? Someone has to compromise. Women feel like they should not have to compromise because they have too much to lose. And men feel like they should have to compromise because they didn't ask for this in the first place. They weren't complaining about women not having no job like that. They were okay with being the, being the primary breadwinner to an extent because it gave them control. I'm not saying that all married men were happy. A lot of married men are miserable and they took their misery out on their wives, but they weren't complaining about their wife not having enough money. They were complaining about being married in general. A lot of them didn't want to have to get married. They didn't want to have to work at a factory job to take care of their family. So they were resentful of that, but they weren't complaining about the woman per se. They weren't saying my wife is, you know, she a B-I-T-C-H. Because a lot of women, they were not that way. They were very supportive, loving and nurturing. And I'm not saying that they weren't harpy, banshee, better axe women out there who tortured their husbands. I'm not saying that wasn't the case at all, okay? There were some. But for the most part, men did not change the rules of marriage. They just stopped getting married or they would have a family on the side of, other side of town. 
where they can have that cake and eat it too. They would go home to their wife and they would have their mistress on the side. So they really weren't complaining about the dynamics of relationships like that. That was mainly women. So essentially, you know, black men and women, I'm not talking about other communities because the out of wedlock, the marriage rates in the black community are the lowest. So I'm going to speak about the black community. So by and large, the black community, we're not on the same page for a multitude of reasons, two of which I addressed in this uh, commentary. The first reason is the culture that has programmed our people to be attracted to partners who are dysfunctional, aka entertainers. Entertainers, by and large, are dysfunctional, narcissistic people for the most part, okay? And the second reason is because the rules have changed. The women have changed. We are not the same way we were 40, 50, 60 years ago. We have more power. We have more education. We have more autonomy. So that changes the dynamic, the dynamics of any relationship. But we're the ones, you know, not we, because men are doing it too in their own way. It's, I don't know what to say. It's annoying. It's annoying watching all this commentary on social media where women are like complaining that they're no good men and men are saying the same thing. But it's like, I'm not going to settle. I'm too good to settle. <laughs> but at the same time, it's like this is just, I don't know what to say. Most relationships require some sort of compromise. Period. Most relationships require some sort of compromise. What are you willing to compromise in order to be married? Entertainers don't have to compromise anything. They can just buy whatever or whoever they want. When you're in transactional relationships, like entertainers have and groupies have, um, there's no compromise. I get what I want, you get what you want. We don't have to negotiate anything. We don't have to make any concessions. I know how much you're charging. You know how much I'm, I want to get paid. That's it. We don't have to haggle over any of the details. We don't have to work together. We don't have to build anything together. It's a transactional relationship. So when you have a transactional relationship, you don't have to settle for anything. And that is what I mean by us emulating celebrity relationships. We think that because we want somebody, we don't have to settle or compromise. I'm not saying that you should just marry any old body, a liar, a pedophile, manipulator, thief. I'm not saying that at all. But what's the difference? There is a happy medium between marrying an attractive yet toxic narcissist and marrying Steve Urkel. Like, if being in a relationship is that serious for you to the point where you're thinking about it all day and every day and it's that important, then perhaps you'll have to change some of your standards, change some of your expectations. Like, for example, the type of job the guy has. He may make good money, but maybe not in the profession that you want him to work in. Um, I'm not saying drug dealer or criminal. No, they're out of the question. Um, or the guy's height. He may be five foot ten instead of six foot four, whatever. Like, you have to make some concessions. If you expect to get everything that you want, then you're going to end up like these celebrities in dysfunctional, transactional relationships that are not authentic. You can't grow with the person. You can't build with the person because you're only concerned with what your needs are and what the other person's needs are. If you read biographies of women who lived in the 1800s, rich women, women of who had a, you know some pedigree and some money, they were married off to someone who they weren't really attracted to by and large. Their marriages were marriages of business, not of love and lust and all that stuff. There's too much of an emphasis placed on lust in relationships because, again, we are emulating celebrities. Celebrities gravitate towards people who they have a lustful attraction for because they don't really have time to cultivate an organic, authentic connection with them. All it's about is sex. I can buy you for a day or for a couple of hours. So it's lustful. So we have now programmed ourselves into overvaluing lust and attraction in relationships, period. I'm not saying a person has to be an ogre, okay? No, I'm not saying it at all. But again, I feel like a lot of us place too much of an emphasis on physical attractiveness in our communities as opposed to having core compatibility, personality, disposition, character, integrity. Those things are more important than how hard she gets your meat or how horny he makes you. That's important, but it's not the most important thing. It's probably like third or fourth on the list. But a lot of us make it number one. If I'm not immediately attracted to him, then I'm not interested whatsoever. That is also a mistake that many of us make because we are emulating and imitating what celebrities do. Celebrities will find a cute girl in the crowd or on social media and say, oh, I want that for 30 minutes, for an hour, for a day. They'll buy it and then they'll get rid of the girl. They don't care about who she is as a person. She was just there to satisfy a need. And essentially, that is how we're conducting ourselves in relationships too. We are looking for someone to satisfy a need. We're not looking to build partnerships with anybody. And that is the problem. One of the problems. Okay? But I'm going to leave it there. Um, yeah, so do you guys think that celebrity worship is one of the reasons why relationships in our community are dysfunctional and toxic? I look forward to reading your feedback. Please like, share, subscribe, and I'll speak to you soon. Thank you.